path of self-mastery, it becomes a question of how best can I live my life in a way that is an expression, the highest expression of self-love. And so through this, this is why Texas Fruit Festival is so important. There are few fruit festivals around the world, all right? So this is a very special event, and it takes a huge amount of cooperation, dedication, commitment, duty, work, you know, all of this over months and months of planning. So I really honor you and I welcome you here and I'm so grateful that each and every one of you are here and a part of this amazing festival. So these festivals go down in history and I have spread the message far and wide around the world. <laughs> People know about this festival from all over. And that is really a special thing because it unites us. People who want to self-heal, people who understand that in order to live a lifestyle of your optimal health, of your highest joy, of your highest expression of self-love, it's a very special thing. And it is, um, it is a path that confronts you in life. And once you see that confrontation, you either accept it or you reject it. So that is the most profound message that I can bring to you today, is that when we finally say yes, yes to ourselves, yes to self-loving, yes to self-healing, which is an expression of self-love, it's a powerful journey to self-heal, then we are able to look upon our life and understand our mission, see our, a vision of ourselves more clearly, see those who have entered into our field of awareness in a way that is meaningful, that is impactful, and to know that we are not just here to live and to perish. We have a mission. We're far more than what we see in this physical body. So I want to take a quick moment as I start my presentation and I'm gonna ask you guys to, some of you, to close your eyes if you like, and to, I wanna do a light meditation. So I wanna invite you to have a visualization and to just begin to white out all the thoughts in your head, all the thoughts in your mind, all the things in this reality, in your dreams, in your thoughts and beyond, all whited out all gone, like the brightest light shining in your third eye, brighter than a thousand suns, so bright that it is electrifying, pulsating, alive, with higher and higher frequencies of love. And as you visualize this beautiful electric white light, it permeates everything you know and you don't know. Everything you imagine, everything you've seen and experienced in any time-space reality. We transcend time and space to a reality that is in the unified field. And in this field, we are radiating and receiving the highest frequency love continually, always, never ending. This is who we are in this Toti potentiality, where all beauty, love, joy permeates. There is no stress, there are no worries, there is no guilt, there is no shame, there is no problem, there is only creation in every now moment. And you are the masters of your reality and in this reality that you create, you are solely responsible. And you created exactly what you wanted to create. And so through this knowing, you can create anything you like with any emotion you desire. But when we talk about this white light frequency that bathes us and anoints us, we know that we can have the self-empowerment to create a reality that is of the highest good for ourselves and others, that is a beautiful, loving, joyful reality. All right, thank you. You may open your eyes. Okay, next slide. So, 
you know, we have all light available to us, all creation, all reality is open to our fingertips. We are light and light permeates all things. We are energy, we are 100% energy. So the reality we create in this life is not as physical and as determined and as mechanical as we would imagine it to be. It is so much more pliable, so much more flexible, so much more synchronistic, so much more spontaneous, so much more magical. And because of this magic that we have at our fingertips, we are masters of our reality. But the key in our life is to become masters of self-mastery, right? And so in this reality, we can grasp onto the unified field, which is God, which is love, which is joy and enlightenment and peace, in a realm where we can open up to knowledge that is divine. And these are the spiritual gifts that we receive when we open our heart to love and always maintain an open channel of love for ourselves. Because if we close that channel of love, we have rejected self-love for whatever reason that we have created in our mind. So we can have all things, all spectrum of reality. Next slide. So imagine a life where we come together and we understand what is important, that we eat the food that is healing to us, that we honor nature and earth, where we are able to harness the power of earth, the growth, the life that feeds us. Because when we live a living foods diet and we eat from the earth, we are healed and alkalized. And there's so much more science involved in this lifestyle. So we'll go to the next slide. Thank you. But before I go into that, I just wanted to say our closest cousins on Earth are the great apes. And this is one of our, they teach us, they're frugivores, they climb, they grasp, and so do we. And so to honor our biology, the species that we are among all species on the planet, just like all the other species, we are made from God. We are able to understand that how we feast is of the earth instead of through processed foods and through foods that will harm us. So I really like that slide. <laughs> Next slide. And the good thing about fruit is you can eat as much as you want. There is no limit. You know, I through my life, I have had some ups and downs and trying to learn what was the right path for me. And I gained 100 pounds through the uh, pregnancy of my uh, second child. And, you know, eating can be a portal to disempowerment. And when we give our power away, there are many portals, there are infinite portals to self-empowerment self or disempowerment. But when we give our power away and have fear, that maybe we're not adequate, maybe we're not eating the way we need to be eating. It will harm our body depending on what we eat. But the truth is, is that the living foods diet can never harm you. You can eat so much amazing food, so much fruit, and it does not harm you, it heals you. And more than that, it regenerates you. And so this is really the healing power of fruit, that it can alkalize your body, it can clarify your lymphatic system. So, next slide. So before I go into that, there are so many foods that are available that, yeah, they're so yummy, trust me, I know, but they're not for our highest good. If we eat these foods and we are already sick, they don't heal us, they worsen our condition. And it's not that we don't ever have to go back to a certain food that might be a tradition or a favorite or it's not that. It's that most of our diet, a large percentage of it, be living foods if we can do that. And it's a journey for everyone. I have been on my personal journey for two years and have learned a lot about it. I go from, I went from 100 day juice fasting last year to being 100% fruit based. And then this year, through stress and different things, I've started to eat about four cooked meals a month. And you can tell, though, 
when you eat fruit all week long and then everybody's eating like beans and rice or it's usually beans, rice or cooked veggies and I'll just, okay, I'll eat, I'll eat like a corn tortilla with beans. And I think, gosh, why did I do that? It was not as good as I wanted it to be. And so there's no shame in that. It's just that we're on our self-healing journey and that we learn that there is a significant impact on our body when we eat those foods and to understand when we heal, we can have a different perspective of what these foods do to us. All right, next slide. So yes, I love to be able to enjoy the things of this earth as much as anyone, but through my journey, I've learned that you no, know, these things aren't good for us. They're not healthy. And so many people may not understand that our organs inside of us can it be in a state of disease and degeneration where our skin can be healthy. You can have healthy skin and then have certain organs that have areas inside of them that have tissues that are degenerating, that are forming boils, cysts, tumors. They can be hard tumors, they can be stones. And so this is the journey to um, regeneration, is understanding the stages of degeneration. There are four stages of degeneration. That's acute, subacute, uh, chronic, and degenerative. And so by the time you go to subacute, the nerve endings of that tissue is already, they're already dying. And so we begin to numb on the inside and not feel the tissue death that is happening from the acid-forming foods. So we can have areas in one organ system that is unhealthy or degenerated, others that are chronic, other tissues in that one organ that are subacute and maybe some are healthy. So when you go to the doctor, you can get a blood test and it can be within normal ranges, but the truth is you can have degenerated tissues in those organs anyway. And I know a lot of people through my coaching of detoxification already have issues with their thyroid, taking thyroid medication, issues with the pancreas, issues with, with the kidneys. The kidneys are, and people don't even realize, they have to be filtering our lymphatic system. And so we're already walking around, a lot of us, with multiple organ failure. So this is scary. And if we want to live a life of optimal health where we're thriving and we're healthy, or we want to live a life where we're experiencing stages of degeneration slowly, that's our choice. But there is a path to optimal health, and that is through fruit, because we are frugivores. All right, next slide. So this is one of the slides that I think are the most important. All diseases start in the gut. And gut health is so important. You know, when the gut isn't healthy, those tissues, it's such a long system, it's so vas vascularized, it has so many nerve endings, it's such a rich, it's the, the tree of life for our body. And so when there are areas in the colon and in the small intestine, we can't forget the small intestine, that have mucoid plaque, that have um, acidosis, that have, you know, that are suffering from uh, meat and flour, these acid-forming foods that are sticky and that desiccate inside the gut, then we can have areas of the colon that begin to degenerate. And it can be very painful because what happens is all of the nerve endings and the tissues around, surrounding that all begins to suffer, all begins to go through the stages of degeneration. And so those areas, imagine if this area right here that is um, stretched or some of the other area, that feeds maybe another organ or it feeds, it vascularizes and gives nutrients to the heart or to the bones or to, you know, we wouldn't want this. We would want the entire colon to be healthy and regenerated. And so that's one of the beautiful things that we can do through fruitarianism. You can regenerate just by eating fruit. You can regenerate through juice fasting. And you know there are green juice uh, fasting, green raw vegans that are you know vegetable based. But then the fruit based raw vegans really enjoy 
major transformations in their life. It is incredible. We're talking people who have normalized their diabetes levels, their um, insulin levels, people who have transformed their body from the inside out, lost 100 pounds. You know, we are intended to live a low-fat fruit diet or fruit-based raw vegan diet. So through this experience, our body completely changes. We weren't, unless we grew up and had parents that were eating this diet, we had no idea what our body can look like or wants to look like, how it wants to regenerate. And this is one of the most important experiences that I went through is to trust my body. It was quite an awakening because I remember when I was pregnant and eating a diet that I didn't really enjoy, um, a meat-based diet, uh, to create the story I had been told and believed was that my placenta would be deteriorating if it did, wasn't um, nourished with enough protein and that there were better sources of protein. And I was seeking at the time. And so I remember thinking, I don't trust my body. I don't want this, but I made decisions out of fear. And it is really a disaster in our life when we, you know, follow our fear. So many terrible things can happen in our life. We can hurt ourselves, you know, we can change our course of reality. We can lose privileges and opportunities in our life, and we don't want that. When we open our heart to love, when we do what we love in every now moment, when we refine the expression of self-love, when we interpret everything we see and experience as love to the highest level we can possibly contain within our body. And as we realize that we are on a journey of accepting and radiating love in its most pure form, then we know that whatever we say and do can only be in the highest expression of love. Not that anybody's perfect, but love is unconditional. Love is compassionate. Love is understanding. Love is forgiving. And this is the biggest part of this mission and this experience is to forgive ourselves and to forgive everything. No matter what happened, who did it, who said it, when it, you know, what got messed up, it doesn't matter. And if it happened now, forgive it. If it happened 20 years ago, forgive it. You will free yourself so much. And it's such a beautiful salvation. It's really a rapture. It's a rebirth to be able to forgive in your life. And so, you know, what do you want? To live a life where we are numbing ourselves or a life where we are self-loving, understanding, dealing with our reality and not harming ourselves, right? Okay, next slide. <laughs> I just wanted to put this up there. Um, you know, we, we, <laughs> we have people that we can trust when we need help and guidance, sure. But we can never trust anyone more than we trust ourselves. Yet trust is a virtue. When we rise to higher levels of self-love and joy, we naturally trust in source. We naturally trust love. We trust reality. We trust God. That everything that enters our field of awareness is a message for us, whether it's to empower us, to teach us. It's all a lesson. And so when we come through this experience and understand that we've been told, we've been advertised, we've been taught ways to treat our body that serve the interests of others, but no, when we take that empowerment back, we learn to serve the interests of God, of our highest self, of source consciousness, of our, of, for the highest good of all. And so, you know, we can certainly know that the healing starts first with what we put in our mouth, but also how we live, how we think about things, how much joy we can radiate in our life. And that's all part of the process because it's very difficult to go through a 100-day fruit juice fast if you're upset. Very difficult. You have to surrender and just love the process and just accept and just know this is for my highest good. And be thankful because, you know, 
one of the things that a hundred day fruit juice fast will do is it will totally cleanse your colon and it will regenerate it. It will help heal you completely from the inside. And that's just the start of the journey is the colon. I mean, there's so much more to heal after that. But as you go to a phase of wanting to eat perhaps a standard American diet or a traditional cooked foods diet, doing a 100-day fruit juice fast or even a 40-day, um, we're talking, then you realize that you have no more cravings for cooked food. Zero. I experienced that zero craving. So that was just an amazing experience and one that I was very moved by. Okay, next slide. So I just wanted to throw this up there, the pyramid for detoxification. You know, basically, this is from Dr. Robert Morse, that grapes are one of the most healing single fruit that we can eat, the red grapes. And so but all the fruits, all the raw foods are really important. And so as we go up, he, he talks about water fasting and breatharianism, but we don't talk about that at Texas Fruit Festival. We just talk about eating fruit. That's a whole other journey. They have their own festivals also. <laughs> so, but yeah, as we go up the pyramid, it is an ascension process. We're not, we can eat as much as we want and it won't harm us if we eat fruit. But also, once you get on that journey, you start realizing, man, I am eating too much fruit even. Um, you know, that can be in, you know, enervating to the colon, and, but it's, it's a really wonderful process. Okay, next slide. So just a quick view of the lymphatic system. Our body is to our cells and two fluids, our entire body. All, every single cell that we have in our body has two fluids that is going around it. The blood, which is, comprises about 25% of our fluids, is encapsulated in cells and, and vessels. And so the nutrients through osmosis, through diffusion, uh, will go through the vessel lining. But the lymphatic system is just free fluids that is everywhere in our body. It's all one type. People say, oh, you're dehydrated, you can see it in your skin. That's all lymph. And so if we're eating a fruit-based diet, that lymph is clear. We don't have any uh, stagnant lymph. We don't have any acidosis. We don't have blocked lymph nodes. We don't have any issues like that. So it is the most important system in our body because we want to make sure we are excreting you know, the, our wastes. So one of the things Dr. Robert Morris likes to talk about is we want to talk, we want to make sure our digestion is good, our utilization and our excretion. These are things that, you know, it's a whole process of uh, util utilizing the nutrients. And when we're acidic or when we are lymphatically blocked, then we can't necessarily utilize those nutrients as easily as if all of the lymph were cleared and that we could get all of that nutrient into each cell. Just imagine having cells blocked off by stagnant lymph, acidic lymph that agglomerates and that doesn't allow, causes inflammation and doesn't allow adequate um, nutrient flow and excretion, cellular excretion into the lymphatic system. And so this is what happens in our body. Okay, next slide. All right, fruit removes mucus. You ever wake up or, you know, have some mucus or, you know, this is not a pleasant experience. Not what we want to be talking about at a fruit vessel, right? No, we should not, you know, eating fruit will never have this kind of experience. We'll be clarified unless we go through some major detoxification. You know, sometimes, you know, when you go through an extended juice fast, you can have these experiences where you have um, mucus or different things coming up and you start to see it's an amazing experience it's, you know unless you're really into it it's not the best topic but we go there here because we want to heal and when we get all of that out then we can see all right now it's gone you know we have a different experience okay next slide so fruit is abundant. There's over 2,300 different varieties of fruit in the world. So people saying you just eat fruit, oh my goodness, it's not like, 
it's such a boring diet. No, there are so many amazing, delicious varieties of fruit all over the place. There are exotic fruits, there are domestic fruits, you know, and of course making um, choices that are for the best for your body, that are organic or that are local, that's very important as well. Okay, next slide. So look at all the beautiful abundance. You know, I had pictures that I had to remove because the talk would be too long, but putting the fruit on your table where your children eat, putting the fruit on shelves, you know, along the wall, making areas in your house that are abundant with fruit so everybody in the house knows where to get the fruit and to eat the fruit. And it's just so beautiful, it's so aromatic, it's so healing, it's so colorful. All right, next slide. And through this diet, we can have heaven on earth. What is heaven on earth? Heaven on earth is where we are happy, where we are fulfilled, we're living our mission, we're healed, we are self-masters. We are mastery, a path of mastery where we understand how to listen to our body, we follow our intuition. We learn how to listen to source consciousness that is communicating with us. We have a direct link and understand our, our power to change the world. And you are the creator of your world. That means if you create something, everybody around you is going to experience what you created. Do we want this to be for the good of all? Or do we want this to be something that's self-serving or that's painful? Now, there's no judgment. All of us are going through our self-healing journey. But when we do it with intent, we're that much more empowered to transform our reality, to raise to a level of awareness and understanding of telepathy, of, of you know, clear audience, clear vision, you know, all the spiritual gifts because we honor love. We honor self-love. So thank you. Next slide. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> you have